here hasn't fallen on deaf ears. A united victory today would move them up four places in the first division table. And the return of that trio, Gordon Strachan, Norman Whiteside and Brian Robson, means Alex Ferguson's team sheet is more in keeping with United's pedigree. As Trevor Brookings said, Norman Whiteside will play his first match under the new manager in a striking role because Frank Stapleton is dropped despite agreeing a new three-year contract this week. As for Tottenham Hotspur, they welcome back Richard Goff at the heart of their defence, where I fancy he'll be partnered by Gary Mabbott, with Graham Roberts possibly reverting to midfield. Up front, Nico Klassen is still injured, young Sean Close is rested, so Clive Allen will look for support from a five-man midfield in which Tony Galvin returns after missing nine games with a cartilage operation. Well, there are two Allens and two Thomases on that caption, which might present uh, a moment or two of hesitation for myself and my co-commentator today, Laurie McMenemy, the Sunderland manager. I'm sure you can handle all the names, John, but uh, I'm very interested here to see how Ozzy Ardiles performs. Uh, he's once again proven everyone wrong by staying... One, he's a foreign player that stayed the longest. He's proved that he didn't just come take the money and run. He's graced the first division for quite a while now. He's an extremely skillful player. He may not last the whole 90 minutes, but I think he's important to David Fleet in this transitional period. His experience will help in the midfield, which I think today might be packed with players, and he'll know just when to strike the balance between attacking and defending. And he loves a big stage, and he won't get a bigger one than this today. Spurs' record here has not been particularly good. Clive Allen there with 21 goals will be hoping they can improve on their last eight league visits, six defeats and two draws. Although I must say they've won two cup ties here in that period. Do you see them uh, doing it today, Laurie? I think that Tottenham will expect Manchester to come at them with all guns blazing away early on and they will look to hold uh, what they've got until uh, the steam goes out of Manchester United and if it's nil-nil after half an hour I think that the longer the game goes they'll fancy themselves uh, to get a win but it's an intriguing situation with all the new players trying to impress the new manager uh, Alec Ferguson but don't forget David Pete's still a new manager and Tottenham want to continue the good away form for him but I think that it just depends who gets the early grip on the midfield what a quick shot there of Alex Ferguson signing autographs it's a match he's been looking forward to I know that and it's just worth pointing out perhaps that there was a time when Alex was linked with the Tottenham job um, after Keith Birkinshaw left White Hart Lane anyway he's now very much the manager of Manchester United and his team in their red shirts and white shorts will be defending the Stretford end in the first half as David Hutchinson from Harrogate gets the match started. Chris Waddle for Tottenham. That's Paul Allen wearing number two. And Graham Roberts in four. And he's fouled immediately. And I believe that that was a fair assumption he's going to play midfield although Mabbott has gone forward for this free kick from the back Ardiles takes it there he is again Waddle up against Jesper Olsen and he's beaten him and that was a firm cross Kevin Moran was there from Waddle corner taken quickly to Glenn Hoddle and here's Roberts, and Turner saved it, Allen! Oh, goodness me, the goalkeeper was let off the hook there. Turner escaped, because when Allen closed in, he couldn't finish what Roberts had started. Tottenham almost scored there in the first minute. The cross came in from Hoddle, watch Roberts the number four. He got a header in, Turner couldn't hold, Allen hit the post. Turner did well to get down to the ball because Clive Allen in fact obstructed him but it's unlike Allen not to get those sharp returns in it's good job it wasn't ten minutes into the game anyway it's a bright start for Tottenham and Waddle on the right hand side there was the instigator of that last attack Definitely in midfield, Graham Roberts, where he had a good spell earlier in the season. 
and he's gone through a testing week because the Glasgow Rangers transfer speculation still hasn't quite died down, in my opinion. Right side. Thomas, free kick's been given. Duxbury finds Brian Robson. Looking for right side, Mabbitt's header. The Tottenham fans are behind Ray Clement's goal there. Quite a number have made the trip north. It's a fixture they always look forward to because both clubs down the years have shared some fine matches. Tony Galvin, socks roll down almost at once, his trademark. Here's Hoddle. Ardiles. They've got room on the right-hand side again for Chris Waddle. And Ardiles into Allen. I think what's happened there, Laurie, is David Pleat has told Chris Waddle to have a go at Duxbury early on on that flank. I think he's been given a completely free role, John, actually, and they are packing the midfield, and then anybody that can go away can give them width at any one time. Here's Moses. Robson. certain sense of uh, anxiety in the Manchester United camp until they can get their game together and get a run going. They looked uneasy last week at Wimbledon when I saw them. But Alex Ferguson, rather like David Fleet at Tottenham, needs a bit of time to get his own ideas across. Peter Davenport there, who was fouled. Number 10 by Richard Goff, number 5. Is Duxbury to Olsen. He's got two to beat there, yes, for Olsen. And he needs help. Duxbury. Moses. Kevin Moran, number six. Well, there was no messing about there. Little Paul Allen on, yes, for Olsen. Possibly uh, <laughs> two of the lightest players on the pitch, but. Uh, He's being spoken to by David Hutchinson. Strachan for United, five minutes gone, Moses. It ricocheted off Glenn Hoddle, offside Davenport. looking in good condition. The supporters here just a bit concerned about the condition of their team these days. That's a flag on the far side. Linesman spotting the offside. In fact, the linesman out there is Trevor Moore from Bradford. And the other linesman today is Roman Ellis from Miguel, Liverpool.
middle his way forward here. Miss kick by Mora. This is Clive Allen. Waddle again hugging the right hand side. And that certainly has worked well for Tottenham in the opening few minutes. Chris Waddles running down the right. Here's Hoddle again. Allen is in there, so is Roberts again. Here comes Gary Mabbott. The shot hit white side and was then skied over by Waddle. Yes, they look very good, Tottenham, at the moment when they're going forward. They've got so many good attacking players and Waddle looks very much on his game. Uh, this was a bit of a chance. A lot of defenders would have tried it. Graham Roberts said, it's not my scene. He'll give it to someone else. That was a tremendous shot. This one, he just wrong-footed himself. But Manchester are very nervous at the moment. Yes, that is showing in this opening period. Tottenham are playing with far more assurance. There's less stress on them at this present time. Here's Brian Robson, the players who've come back yet to settle, but Strachan has found Robson now. Sieverbeck. And Robson forward again here. And the foul was by Gary Mabbott. Well, they won't have Stapleton's head to aim at today, but Moran and McGrath have both made their way forward. Right side. Well, it was as a striker that Norman Whiteside first burst upon the scene as a 17-year-old. Indeed, he was only 16 when he made his debut, but uh, he played up front in the uh, 82 World Cup, and he's back there today. Sieverbeck's header. Ozzy Ardila has got the touch. Mitchell Thomas, number three. Mabbott. Good touch by Clive Allen. Ardila's. And still it's Waddle on the right, running it when he can at Duxbury here. Duxbury got a foot in this time and gets the ball back from right side. Now he wants Olsen supporting down that side as well. White side, Strachan, white side in space. Mabbott was so quick to close it down. But there was a gap at first. McGrath, play on, Hoddle. Free kick. Just over ten minutes gone. And a sign perhaps that Manchester United might be starting to settle. Certainly Tottenham have pulled everybody back behind the ball for the free kick. And here's John Sieverbeck. Into Strachan from Whiteside. Another free kick. Glenn Hoddle in the tackle this time. Again, the lineup on the far side, White side, Moran McGrath. White side's trotting in a bit now and going back again. Robson to Davenport, Olsen, it's going to come to Strachan, a chance! White side, White side got it. 12 minutes gone, and he comes back as a striker and opens the scoring. It was tucked in low in the end to Davenport. Olsen let it run. Strachan played it through. White side ran in, and Manchester United have taken the lead. I would think Alec Ferguson is taking a lot of. Uh joy out of this one because it's something which has obviously been worked out on the training grounds for a long time.
Manchester United won, Tottenham Hotspur nil, after Spurs, if anything, had had the best of the first ten minutes. Well, that's just the start that Manchester United were looking for, to settle them down after all the turbulent happenings around Old Trafford these last few weeks. And there he goes again. Play on, Tottenham had the advantage. Roberts. And here comes Hoddle, Paul McGrath. Waddle trying to make something of it. Moses. Davenport. Oh, Tony Galvin. Good effort. So, a near thing in the first minute at this end, and a goal for Manchester United at the other end after 12 minutes. Which is quite promising for the way the match might go, because last season both the league meetings were goalless draws. Strachan, Robson. So a quarter of an hour gone, here's Moses for Manchester United, Davenport. Tottenham are giving away a series of free kicks on the edge of their area, that was Richard Goff, and it's putting Manchester United in a threatening position, and from one of them the goal came. Whiteside, in fact, has got on the end of the last two free kicks. Strachan for Olsen. And in comes Moore, and the whistle's already gone. Flag was up on the far side. Many top teams, John, appear to just play free kicks off the cuff, you know, because they have so many talented players. It's obvious that Alec Ferguson's having none of that. The lot was offside, it was a very well-worked free kick, and the goal came, of course, from a perfectly executed free kick. Mitchell Thomas now Whiteside not the best of passes Paul Allen cut it out got Chris Waddle to his right four the other way still Waddle away by Moore and Moore has made two or three good interceptions when the ball has come in past Duxbury Goff and Manchester United having to cover their tracks a bit there. And there are plenty of players, as Laurie McMenemy said, in that midfield area. And the collision there was Hoddle and Moses. 
Here's Siva back. And Glenn Hoddle's giving away some of these free kicks as well. On that occasion, uh, the referee said no foul, but uh, he's certainly getting in some tackles in there, Glenn. Not one of his uh, strengths, one some people would have you believe. But here's Paul McGrath. And now he's made a slip, and away goes Clive Allen. That's a good effort. Saved by Turner. Speculative, but very dangerous. Davenport. This has got the makings of a cracking game. Allen just took his chance to fire one in there and could well have curled it round a lesser goalkeeper. Model. Now Roberts. Mitchell Thomas. Ardiles in space. He got behind Strachan. They didn't go with him. And Duxbury's forced to cover. Ardiles got away there from Strachan. Well, Tottenham started on the attack, and they've got to stay there now if they can. A goal behind. Abbott's in there again. Now, Kevin Moran decides to play his way out of difficulties. Interesting watching our dealers. At his age, he knows that he's got to conserve his energy. But when he goes on a forward run, it's usually a very telling one. He seems to knit Tottenham's game together, doesn't he, when he's on the pitch. They've never quite managed to replace him when he's been out. Side, Olsen. That's off the head of Paul McGrath. Twenty minutes gone, and Spurs on the ground, but they haven't won in the league since 1976. Are trailing by one goal to nil. But here's Mabbitt. And Whiteside seems to be relishing this uh, renewed role. Here's Strachan. And Robson, who found Duxbury. Olsen's on the wing. Four in the middle waiting. And a corner to United. Their first corner. McGrath forward. Strachan will take it. They're looking for a possible flick on. McGrath and Davenport in together with Robson. Might easily have been number two. McGrath won the near post header. Moses. Ran on to Strachan. And away by Goff. Duxbury. Good ball. Strachan onside. Olsen also onside. Mabbit away. Well, this is more like it from Manchester United. They're putting together a good sustained spell here. And Tottenham are being panicked into giving away free kick after free kick. That was Paul Allen. Second offence for Paul Allen. And that in the mind of David Hutchinson means a caution. 
that will be an accumulation of the two fouls that's earned him that booking, I'm sure. Olsen takes. Whiteside jumping there and forcing a corner. Halfway through the first half, and Manchester United looking as though they could capitalise on this one-goal lead. time uh, Hoddle got the header here's Olsen Strachan a well, lot Tottenham are very exciting to watch John I think over the years if they've had one failing they've had uh, a lack of too many hard natural defenders at the minute you would say Graham Roberts and possibly Goffer in that category but I think it shows when someone takes the fullbacks on and Consequently, Paul Allen, who I don't think he's a natural defender, got himself in a tangle and finished up in the book. Chris Hewton and Gary Stevens still on the top and injured list, incidentally. So David Fleet hasn't got a full complement to choose from at the moment. But then neither is Alex Ferguson, and he might have a further casualty here in Paul McGrath. They're already without the likes of Colin Gibson, Manchester United, and now McGrath goes down. That near post corner, Laurie, uh, it's become something of a repetitious thing, but um, it does cause problems, doesn't it, even for the best uh, first division defenders? Well, it does, because you stick a tall player at the front and all he has to do is just get a little touch and of course it alters the fight of the ball the goalkeeper has got a chance he's look really if he comes he's jumping into a clutter of bodies if he stays on his line he's often got little chance but it was uh, he was fortunate there because Brian Robson appears to me to be getting far too much room on these corners I think uh, Graham Roberts is supposed to be defending him but he's standing about five yards off him and you kind of give him that much room in the penalty area Yes, that corner illustrated the very point you're making. Big McGrath there, who's currently being treated for an injury, flicked it on, and it was the second touch they wanted, but they were denied, actually, by the man coming off the line. Yeah, but the other point, Brian Robson arrived there unescorted. I don't think David Pitt would be too happy about that. Well, Manchester United have got McGrath back on his feet, and Spurs will take the free kick. A bit of pushing and shoving going on there, and it was spotted by the linesman and Laurie McMenemy, and it's Goff having tangled Norman, is it? maybe Whiteside. A yes. little bit of normal, silly uh, pushing with the handbags out. Uh, it started like that, but unfortunately there was an elbow went up, which the linesman saw, but the referee's been very sensible and just told him to quieten down. So, eventually, Ardiles will take the free kick for Spurs. McGrath, Goff, header by Galvin. McGrath hasn't shaken off the injury yet. Davenport. Those little one-touch balls from Ardiles, keeping Tottenham moving in midfield. Here's Roberts. He's found Waddle. Bit of a tangle on the far side. Here's Galvin, though. Galvin's very much the unsung hero amongst all the stars, but I've always thought he was a very good player. But he looks uh, out of form at the moment because he's been out for a long time with a cartilage and he's not playing in his normal wide position. I think this very flexible system David Pitt's using uh, has taken a lot of chances, certainly defensively, because he's virtually playing with one man up who happens to be Clive Allen. Still hobbling there, Paul McGrath. Oh, Chris Turner taking a long time to clear that ball. And uh, goalkeepers can be penalised, of course, for time wasting. There's Ardiles. Well, no 
Moses got in his way. Roberts got it back off Strachan, so here's our dealers again. And again, Moses steps across him. Play on, says the referee. Manchester United have possession. Robson. And now Duxbury. Right-footed player playing on the left flank. Back both Colin Gibson and Arthur Alderston have been on the injured list recently. And McGrath is clearly not going to be able to continue. This is going to be a reorganisation for Manchester United. Off he comes. And on goes Frank Stapleton, who has played centre-half before on more than one occasion in an emergency. And initially, with 17 minutes still left in the first half, that's just where he's gone, wearing the number 12 shirt. Robson. Duxbury. Olsen. And this time, Paul Allen is the victim of the tackle. I wondered, you know, whether Stapleton would go up front, dropping Whiteside into midfield, and seeing what a lot of people think might happen eventually. Brian Robson going into the back four, John, but it hasn't happened yet. Uh, it's a twisted knee, the uh, McGrath injury, I gather. Um, this is the free kick for Tottenham with Goff having joined the attack here, getting the header in there in front of Moran. And Jesper Olsen wins it. Offside. Talking to uh, Clive Allen this morning, he's a uh, good keeper of records. He was talking about the 21 goals in 21 games that he's got. In fact, he's now been overtaken as the leading scorer in the four divisions because Richard Hill of Northampton went on to 22 on Friday night. So uh, Clive needs one now to get level with him. Here's Davenport. corner to Manchester United so they've now got Stapleton to join the throng there it was out by Goff Schieberbeck and Clive Allen now we're talking goal scorers it's Norman Whiteside whose 12th minute effort keeps Manchester United in front here but I should add that uh, Ian Rush also has 21 this season including the uh, one in the charity shield and we've still got some way to go before Christmas so they're making the pace among the opportunists here's Mitchell Thomas to Gary Mabbitt. Brian Robson. Well, he'll need a few games, I would imagine, to uh, get back to his peak. Frank Stapleton in the centre half position. <laughs> Kevin Warren. Well, the referee spotted that. Graham Roberts, the offender. He had a kick when the ball had gone and he didn't get away with it. Roberts, who was uh, sent off against Wimbledon not many weeks ago, now receives another booking. Here's Moran. And Cedarbeck. Moran again. Oh, and Moran goes on 
chance for the centre back to score. And he fails to take it. Kevin Moran put clean through by Davenport. Only the goalkeeper to beat. But the defender doesn't often find himself in this privileged position. And he didn't quite apply the forwards finish, but it was close. Yeah, typical defender there. He took it on a yard too far, really. He started this move off, gave it to Davenport, got it back. He possibly should have had a go now, well, a yard before that, and he just missed. But what a great run and uh, a warning for Tottenham. They're not picking people up who are coming from the back. BBC's first ever live league match three years ago between these two teams. Saw Manchester United win here 4-2, and Kevin Moran scored twice that night, so... He must have felt then that he was on for an unusual sort of hat-trick. But he couldn't quite uh, finish it cleanly. Robson <laughs> forward. A nice ball from Peter Davenport, actually, which uh, supplied that opening for Manchester United. He's now hoping to get a flick on himself, but it didn't arrive. Stapleton, Strachan. Robson, Strachan. Oh, Olsen's in yards of space. Volleyed away by Goff when Robson was hoping the ball would come to him. Tottenham's right flank being exposed here. White side. Well, the referee will have to sort that one out. <laughs> There's a few World Cup players around there. Richard Goff, Norman Whiteside, Ozzy, he's going to drop the ball, I think wasn't to Tottenham's liking, although Glenn Hoddle seems to have uh, found an outlet. This is Moses. Tucked away by Strachan there for Siva Beck. He got away from Galvin. In the middle, Davenport and Whiteside. Davenport. Robson's behind him. Corner. Clements coming for it through a crowd of players, and Ardiles once again smooth things down for Spurs. But uh, Roberts certainly doesn't. Duxbury, Strachan, right side, clipping the ball about nicely now, United. Davenport. And Mabbott. Oh, they got caught again, and it's there. Peter Davenport has made it 2-0, and little, well, Gary Mabbott did Crestfall, and little Paul Allen, I think, was also involved in the error. It was Mabbott who headed the ball out, and what happened here was that Allen let Davenport come right in past him, and he also got the ball past Clements from a very narrow angle, and it's 2-0 to Manchester United, and with 36 minutes gone, Spurs, I'm afraid, have only themselves to blame. Defensive sloppiness has cost them the second goal. But it's a morale booster for Davenport, a player who's not been thriving with the greatest of confidence recently, but that was well taken given the opportunity. Roberts. Galvin and Turner comes for this and Spurs have got to get their skates on here they're in danger of letting this match run right away from them and it's on that right flank of the defence where the trouble really came Yeah, you're right about 
Tottenham, they've got to get a grip and uh, the system that they're working with packing the midfield, a little bit like the stuff we saw in Mexico during the summer, uh, very good when you've got the ball and when you've got good players in possession, but they're chasing it now, Manchester United have got much more possession, they're sharper to the ball and there's not many in the Tottenham team taking responsibility. Where they're looking for leadership, really. The captain is Ray Clements, the goalkeeper. This is Waddle. That's getting a little bit aggravated. Brian Robson in the thick of it with Ozzy Ardiles. And the Tottenham players very angry about the challenge. They want some action. Uh, somebody's gone too far here. It's Ardiles. Well, Tottenham are in a mess now. They've gone two goals behind, and they've had two of their midfield players booked. In fact, counting Paul Allen, who was booked for the foul, it's three bookings. Ardiles. There's Waddle. And still. And Turner let that one come back off the top of the bar. Goff's in there, and Turner's dropped it the second time and made two mistakes, and neither one was punished. There's a lucky lad there because they were really under pressure, and it's a good warning to Manchester United that they can't afford to relax. The opposition might not be playing as a team at the moment, but they've got enough talented individuals who can still turn a game on their own ability. forward for Tottenham who desperately need to get something back before half time if they can but the way Manchester United have uh, set up this two goal lead they would kick themselves now if they let it slip Graham Roberts Tackle was by Moran. Hoddle. Offside plug was up anyway against uh, Clive Allen. Here's Olsen. Here's Whiteside. Olsen. Roberts now. Allen to Mitchell Thomas. Clive Allen. Offside. One of the Manchester United supporters certainly pleased to see those goals go in because it's the first time since the 11th of October that United have scored more than once in a league match. It was when they beat Sheffield Wednesday here. They've only scored 17 in 17 league games before today, but they've got two to add to that total now. the time we've seen a two-goal lead slip and it's happened uh, to United here at Old Trafford before now here's uh, Waddle three minutes left in the first half Frank Stapleton playing at centre-half there because uh, if you have joined the match late, Paul McGrath went off with a twisted knee. But it doesn't seem to have unsettled Manchester United. In fact, uh, Frank looks very comfortable back there. This is Galvin.
for Stapleton. Spreading the play to Jesper Olsen on that left wing. Now Duxbury. And Olsen would have been away again there. This is Davenport. Just wonder whether David Pleat might think about bringing on Danny Thomas in that right back position if things get much worse on that side of the field. He could reorganise. And I. <laughs> There he is, in fact. This is Strachan, Olsen. Robson. Oh, God's mistake. More and no. Shh. Could so easily have been three. And again, Tottenham making a present of that opportunity. Tony Galvin. United are flying now. They won't want to stop. But I think Tottenham... Are begging for the referee to blow they could do with a good 10 minutes and a good chat from David Pleat to get them organized this is Olsen here's Davenport Strachan is backing him up Davenport again So the last minute of the first half here at Old Trafford in this first division match. Manchester United 2, Tottenham Hotspur 0. A fair reflection of the way the game has gone. Spurs started well, but they've lost their way since. And they're also on three bookings, which... Uh, with a proliferation of bookings and sendings off this season, is always dangerous. In fact, uh, the game I saw yesterday at West Bromwich Albion, there were three sendings off. That's going to be a free kick. Here's Davenport. Duxbury. Oh, Whiteside trying to get in behind Mabbott. Stoppage time at the end of the first half. Moses, right side. And the whistle goes to the satisfaction of the Manchester United faithful. Right side in 12 minutes. Made it 1-0. And even after McGrath went off injured, United capitalised on that lead. And after 36 minutes, they made it 2-0. And Gary Mavitt's header here wasn't actually the initial problem. Allen hesitated. Davenport came in, and that was two. Well taken from that angle, actually. Ray Clements might want to look back on that and uh, have a few thoughts, but... Uh, the fact of the matter is that at half-time, the score at Old Trafford is Manchester United 2, Tottenham Hotspur 0. Just to show that we are totally democratic, uh, although we're often accused of just concentrating on the top teams, uh, there's some FA Cup news this afternoon. There's a match down at Maidstone, one of the ambitious GM Vauxhall Conference Clubs. And the half-time score there is Maidstone nil, Cambridge United nil. Cambridge United themselves had a little run in the Middlewoods Cup and Tottenham beat them, actually, uh, not so long ago. And uh, in the FA Cup this afternoon down there, it's nil-nil at Maidstone. And if you work with us at the beginning of the programme, you might also like to know that uh, as the rain comes pouring down at Old Trafford, that this morning Middlesbrough had a win at Notts County in the FA Cup second round. So they will go into tomorrow's third round draw, which uh, we should all presumably be listening to on Radio 2 at half past 12, one of the definite dates on the football calendar, an exciting draw, which uh, will also involve, obviously, Manchester United and Tottenham Hotspur. And Ozzy Ardiles, who can look back on an FA Cup winner's medal when Spurs won that uh, memorable 100th final. Ben Hoddle played as well against Manchester City. 
the flavour of the FA Cup will soon be in the air again. We've got a live match on BBC on the weekend of the third round. But for the meantime, it's back to the serious business of points in the first division. And Manchester United here have the edge with a 2-0 cushion at half-time. Stapleton has lined up in the middle of the back four. And as yet, we've seen no sign of Danny Thomas coming on for Tottenham. Here's Glenn Hoddle. Ardiles. Olsen. Strachan. Sieverbeck's gone charging down the right wing. Davenport. Strangely enough, when Tottenham last won a league match here ten years ago, they were two down to Manchester United and came back to win 3-2. It was a match shown uh, on match of the day that night. So I suppose you could say that uh, history might just repeat itself, but uh, they'll have an awful lot to do. Here's Ardiles. Clive Allen for Spurs. Galvin. Hoddles there with the flick and Duxbury with the clearance. Right side tangling with Paul Allen. That was Goff. This is Thomas. Mitchell Thomas, that is. Galvin. Chris Waddle. Frustrating sort of player, Chris Waddle. He can delight you with these mazy dribbles and then he can disappoint you. He's frustrating, I would think, to play with and to manage, but uh, you persevere with people like him because I think that the crowd, by and large, want to see good attacking players, and especially when they, they give you width as well and take the full back on. He's an England international, and I'm sure that over the whole season that he pays his manager his faith in him back. Davenport. Abbott to meet him. Here's Huddle. Put up. Free kick to Spurs. Richard Goff has made his way forward. Here's Waddle. He can come right again to Paul Allen. And still, Ardiles. Right side's challenge, Waddle. Oh, what a mistake here. Stapleton and Sieverbeck in a bit of a mess. Perhaps there wasn't a shout from someone there. That appeared to be confusion. Anyway, Sieverbeck's able to bring the ball away now. And that's his rather stronger quality. Here's Strachan. And they're trying to stay on side. And Graham Roberts slipped there and lucky to get the flag. Olsen's offside, actually. But Roberts actually slipped. And had the flag not gone up, he would have been in no position to get back and challenge. Certainly not um, provided much in the way of cohesion up front. Ferguson got a victory in his first home game here against Queen's Park Rangers, so three points today would mean he'd made a solid start at Old Trafford. Flag 
brings up again here. If you get the biggest crowds in the league, you've also got to live with the fact that they're entitled to be the most demanding. Thomas for Tottenham. And Sieverbeck drove that in the direction of Olsen. And overcame a beleaguered Paul Allen. And a free kick it is. That came out of the Denmark World Cup manual, I suppose. That uh, cross-field ball. Anyway, here's Olsen again. Davenport coming in here, and Clements just got a hand to it. The skillful players, the two uh, Danish players, and uh, Olsen hasn't been in the game too much, but whenever he's been in, he's usually caused a little bit of panic in the Tottenham defence. Well, he's preparing now to take this corner. And Robson's up there. Moses. Spin Graham Roberts. In fact, uh, the handshake signifies a free kick to Manchester United. For which uh, Stapleton and Moran have both gone forward. Richard Goff with the header. Stapleton. And the corner again as Manchester United turn the screw on Tottenham. Low Frank playing the centre half. He just took that opportunity to remind Alec that he is a forward and he can do a little bit of magic around about the penalty area there. It's played short to Whiteside. Back again to Olsen. And Tottenham can't for the moment get out of their own half. Olsen again. Cousin Kevin Moran gently on to Frank Stapleton Moses Robson away from Galvin the scene switches to the right for Manchester United and Moses is covering a lot of ground in there here's Olsen it's Moses again oh he got taken by uh, Tony Galvin so Tottenham are going to suffer their fourth booking of the afternoon that's not particularly in the Tottenham tradition that, but there's no question about the trip. Lazy tackle this from a tired player. Been out a long, long time for the cartilage, and it sums up his frustration on the afternoon. Here's Strachan. I've lost count of the number of free kick Spurs have conceded. They really are bringing a wave of red shirts down on themselves here by conceding the ground. Stapleton's forward again. Here comes Duxbury. He's got time to join the attack as well, but Strachan will have to hurry. on Gordon Strachan. Oh, 
Hoddle. Well, they're going to have to get some midfield players forward somehow, Tottenham ahead of the ball to find some sort of foothold in the match. Here's Hoddle. It'll be a substitution any second. Ardilas hasn't completed the 90 minutes very often and uh, he'll be the man to come off. Not this season he hasn't anyway. This is Davenport. That's beautifully played by Davenport. The ball to Strachan was right, but he was just marginally offside. Davenport has put two delicious through balls into the path of first Moran and then Strachan in this match. Substitution. Ozzy Ardiles off. Danny Thomas on, and I would imagine that could mean a change of role for Paul Allen, because Danny Thomas would normally operate at right back, but we'll have to wait and see. Here's Waddle. Still Waddle. That's gone. Corner. Tottenham need to get something off a set piece, I think, John, because their approach play isn't getting them as far as the penalty area at the moment. Well, they've got uh, Mabbott, Goff and Roberts all positioned on the far side of the area here. Hey, Mabbott! That is a terrific goal, and this player, he's all-purpose. A brilliant header by the England international Gary Mabbott. Probably more spectacular than the one he got against Yugoslavia. What a powerful effort that was. 57 minutes gone. Nobody picked him up. But my word, that was an inspirational goal for Tottenham. I doubt whether the goalkeeper saw it. And Spurs are back in business. You think the manager can take credit for that substitution, John? Change in the game. Well, I'll tell you what, it's, it's turned things around a bit here because it's come at a time when Tottenham badly needed something and as you said, it was a set piece that brought it. David Pleat there has reorganised, Danny Thomas is playing at right back and Paul Allen has gone into the right-hand midfield berth. This is Strachan. Just a word about Gary Mabbott, Laurie. In, a, in an era when they talk about players having to be versatile, he seems to be able to play just about anywhere and do very nearly anything. Yes, and he's a very popular lad. He's a, he seems to be a very nice character. He's a diabetic, and uh, he's an uh, inspiration to any youngster in the same situation that he can overcome that problem and still be a top-class footballer. Also been suffering from a bad cough and cold this week, Gary Mallett, but uh, a very big breakfast this morning at the Tottenham Hotel seemed to help him to shake that off. He's quite an eater too. Here's Hoddle eating up the ground for Tottenham. Good effort, oh. and Turner flat, and an old goal, Kevin Moran. Spurs are level, and Glenn Hoddle created this. He tried to chip the keeper, Turner flaps, and watch Kevin Moran here. That has to go down as an own goal. It's 2-2. Hoddle, who saw the possibility, forced Turner to make an awkward-looking save. The ball came back behind him. Kevin Moran could have got it out, and he put it in. 59 minutes gone, it's 2-2, and... Once again, a two-goal lead disappears. How often that seems to happen in football when a side goes two goals up early? Chris Turner is an excellent goalkeeper, John, but if there's ever been a criticism of him, it's on that sort of chip. His lack of inches sometimes let him down, and I think in that occasion, uh, he could have positioned himself a little better. Well, what a different game we've got here now. Two goals in two minutes by Tottenham. Mabbott after 57, an own goal by Moore and after 59. 
and I suppose memories are revived of that match here ten years ago when Spurs finally won 3-2. Here's Strachan though for Manchester United, Davenport. This is Hoddle. And Clive Allen. Well, Spurs have found some inspiration now. Second goal was a gift, but Glenn Hoddle would take credit, obviously, for testing Turner the way he did. Here's Strachan. They found inspiration, John, but they've also changed their tactics in their system. Uh, Chris Waddle has been stuck up front alongside Clive Allen. They had every opportunity, the two of them are running wide and pulling the centre halves around. And they remember that Frank Stapleton is not experienced there. It's given Manchester United a problem that they didn't have before. And Robson having to get back to Shepherd, the ball away from Paul Allen. Oh, well turned on by White side to Olsen. Davenport in the middle, waiting for a cross, so is Strachan. And it's been cut out, and who else but Mabbott again. Moving people forward, also leaves spaces behind, and Manchester are trying to find Olsen, who is just taking his time and hugging the touchline, in the hopes that he'll get breaks as that one there proved, nearly proved very decisive for them. Well, Whiteside and Stapleton have positioned themselves in the near post vicinity. And Stapleton's was the flick on. And Clement's in trouble. Davenport, no. Referee was on the spot. He's given a foul. No goal. Well, this is now one of the most eventful matches we've had. The corner was dangerously swung into the near post again. And uh, as Ray Clements went for that, there's an arm up there. The goalkeeper appears to be impeded, and Davenport's effort is not counting. Clive Allen for Spurs. And a lovely ball to Waddle. Well, down the years, it's always been said, and rightly, that Spurs Manchester United matches, put it which way round you like, have thrown up some fine occasions, some splendid football and intense excitement. We've got that here now. Strachan. Oh, well played by Paul Allen. He looks better in that midfield position. Here's Roberts. Hoddle. Roberts goes again. Lovely ball by Hoddle. That's good with the block. And Jesper Olsen quick enough to come away. It could go either way now. So unpredictable and so enjoyable. Robson. Danny Thomas. Paul Allen. Robson again. It's a real flow to the match now. Sieverbeck. Davenport. Free kick. Davenport was obstructed. And Manchester United, having conceded a two-goal lead, now look for a way to get back in front. Robson's moved away. Strachan to take. Moses... Good effort! Yes, Clement saw it all the way. Robson. Ducks great. Oh, Danny Thomas shook him off. He's got Paul Allen outside him, two the other way. Still Danny Thomas. Galvin. Paul Allen. Clive Allen coming near post. It's 
Oh, Strachan was knocked over there off the ball. <laughs> Referee had a quick look round. The official crowd figure, incidentally, is just under 36,000. And they're enjoying themselves. Spurs on the attack again. And that was Sieverbeck on Waddle. Well, you can't say that Tottenham have gone on the defensive at all, John. They're pushing forward, and Glenn Hoddle has come more into his own since Arvillez has gone off. He's realised he's got to take responsibility around that midfield, and that was an excellent pass from the centre circle right over the corner flag, which has earned him a corner. And Glenn Hoddle's going to take it. Kevin Moran. Paul Allen, Galvin, well played by Whiteside, looking up to see two ahead of him. I always remember back in my local reporting days, uh, the Barnet manager of that time, great character called Dexter Adams, once said to me, 2 0 is the worst lead to have in football if you go too, up too early in the game. It happened to Argentina in the World Cup final, and it's happened to Manchester United here today. We're back at 2 2, and that old adage proves true yet again. I'll settle for that next Saturday, John. Well, it's certainly a match which the uh, Manchester United Tottenham tradition will be quite pleased to add to the list. Moses being spoken to, although all the bookings actually uh, have gone to Tottenham players, four have been cautioned, without it being, I have to say, an ugly game in any sense. Now, Goff is coming in from the far side, in fact he came in well, but it rebounded to Olsen, and now Manchester United could have a break on, it was Whiteside who found Olsen, there were three the other way, against three. If he plays the right ball, it's on here. Davenport. No, it was right side in the middle who was really screaming for it and Strachan out to the right. Halfway through the second half. Manchester United 2, Tottenham Hotspur 2. Hoddle for Spurs. Tries to reach the line. Certainly a more exciting and invigorating game for the spectators, Laurie, than the Merseyside derby a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, to be fair, I think the weather spoiled that one, John. Uh, this has been an excellent game for everyone concerned. Credit to both teams and both managers for allowing it to flow and uh, keep attacking, it's hence the four goals. Yes, it was certainly a strong wind at Goodison that day. The win for the moment here, figuratively anyway, is with Spurs. This is uh, Paul Allen, Danny Thomas. Well, that uh, talking point a few minutes ago, when there was a, uh, a, an effort disallowed, I won't call it a goal, because it wasn't. Clements appeared to be bundled there, and I think David Hutchinson was in a very good position to make that decision. Here's Olsen. Roberts. This is uh, Mitchell Thomas. And he's done well, he's got past Strachan. He's got Galvin going outside him. And Sieverbeck read what was going to happen there. Well, where's your money now, Laurie? It's 
to me pocket, Jonathan. <laughs> um, no, it, to say it could go either way, uh, I think that I can't see Manchester United losing. But uh, at half time, I couldn't really see Tottenham getting back into the game. But credit to them. Uh, with so many attacking players on the field, they had to go forward, and that's what they've done. Here's Moses. Touched by Whiteside. This is Robson. Blocked by Mabbott. In by Duxbury to Moses. And Glenn Hoddle comes away with three players ahead of him. One of them is Galvin here. Waddle's gone on the left wing. And uh, Clive Allen's in the middle on this side. Galvin. Warren's header out. It's a corner. They're appealing for hands over there, or Waddle was, but a uh, corner's been given. That's Tony Galvin's strength. When he's fully fit, he gets to that byline, and nine, well, usually ten times out of ten, you can rely on him getting a good cross in. He's an unsung hero, I reckon, of that team. Well, Hoddle's going to take the corner. Abbott was up again. Stapleton got the header away. Side against Galvin. Be interesting to know what Alec Ferguson thinks about the English First Division after playing at Wimbledon last week with their distinctive style, coming up against Tottenham with uh, so many good international players in it. I don't suppose there was such a variation in systems from one week to the other where he's just come from in Scotland. He was really like a schoolboy approaching this match, Laurie, and his enthusiasm. He wanted to see what it was like what he called one of the glamour occasions, Manchester United Tottenham. And uh, I don't know quite how his heart's beating at the moment, but it's certainly been eventful. This is Mitchell Thomas to Chris Waddle. What he certainly won't want to see is United concede another goal. Mitchell Thomas is coming more into the game in an attacking sense now. Getting down that left-hand side. for Paul Allen. And Dixbury was the player who conceded the corner. And who picked Mabbard up this time, John? Waddle. Oh, and Allen went in. It's a goal. Well... Waddle curled it in. Allen made absolutely sure it went in the net. But I just want to see that one again as to how close to the line he was. Waddle curved it in, and Allen went in. Whether he'll claim that, strikers usually do from there. And Clive Allen closed in here. And I've got a feeling Clive will say that's his 22nd of the season. If you got kicked in the head, you'd want to claim it yes, as well. Yes, you <laughs> certainly would. 73 minutes That's gone. That's where a striker's on the corn, when the boot is literally flying towards your face, and you put your head there, and you claim the goal. Uh, I'm sorry, but Mr Turner's got to have another look at his position, and uh, possibly that corner was taken too quickly for Manchester United, who were possibly looking to see who was picking Mabbitt up as a result of the last corner. They took a short one, and they whipped it over before they were ready for it. Well, it's a very quiet bench down there, and uh, there'll be some differing emotions on that bench because Tottenham, from 2-0 behind, have now gone 3-2 up. It was a slack piece of defending in the first place when the corner was conceded. They let Waddle get the cross in. The goalkeeper is struggling hopelessly, and there's Clive Allen, the poacher extreme. Chris Turner crestfallen. And if you look at that picture there, John, as the ball went in the net, there was seven Manchester United players and one Tottenham player, and he got the ball into the back of the net. Three goals in 16 minutes, and I know some people feel we stretch the arm of coincidence a bit far sometimes when we refer back to matches in the past. But how strange that when Spurs last won here in the league, ten years ago, exactly this happened. That's Allen's, no question.
They were 2-0 down that day and won 3-2. They were 2-0 down today and they lead 3-2. Fifteen minutes to go. And Manchester United wondering exactly what's hit them. Defensive errors, that's for sure. But uh, we're not complaining among the neutrals that we've seen five goals. Robson, Strachan, Sieverbeck. Right across for Olsen. Robson's in the penalty area here. And Robson! Might have preferred it on his left foot, but uh, then again, it might have been 3-3. And it's not over yet, John. And this proves that there's still plenty of life left. There's Olsen, who's just lying out there handy for things like that to happen. And one would normally expect Brand to get that on target, but it would certainly would have been on his other foot. But uh, they're living dangerously a little bit, Tottenham. And interesting that they haven't pulled Chris Waddle back. They've stayed with the two men up, and uh, that's plenty of confidence in the side for you. And uh, what a difference in Paul Allen since he's gone forward. Yes, that was in many ways a turning point, although Danny Thomas hadn't been on the pitch more than a few seconds when Spurs got that uh, earlier goal. Nevertheless, the game has changed completely since uh, David Pleat made the switch. Here's Mitchell Thomas to Hoddle. Galvin. Hoddle in the way. Manchester United could break here. They've got Strachan on the ball. Three the other way from him. And Danny Thomas, well played. Right side. Well, this is exactly what you want when you're watching your football live. A game that could still go anybody's way, really, although Spurs now must fancy themselves having come from two behind. But it could well go right to the last few seconds. Here's Strachan. Right side's coming in for the header. It's too long for him. Olsen. And that's going to find Strachan again. Sieverbeck's moving up. Moses. That's great. Olsen. And Olsen again. David Pleat's been very clever, I think. He's certainly exploited the fact that Frank Stapleton is an emergency centre-half. It would suit the centre-forward back there just to have someone to mark. He has taken a target man away, and Frank Stapleton will find it very difficult to mark players who are continually on the move, and that's what Tottenham have been doing uh, in the second half. Oh, mistake. Stapleton and Moran. This is Clive Allen. Good save this time by Turner. Clive Allen still carrying the sponge to mop up the blood from the wound he sustained in scoring the third Tottenham goal. But Stapleton's square pass there to Moran went astray. Moran's to Whiteside, didn't. Strachan is through the centre. And here's Olsen. Well played by Chris Wadder, but he's being asked to do an awful lot there for the return, and he's made it from Paul Allen. Clive Allen in the middle. Hoddle. Only to Strachan, though. Now Manchester United have got to get players out of their own half into more advanced positions. The trend of the match is completely reversed. Here's Olsen. Strachan to Whiteside. Robson's on a run here. 
Mitchell Thomas jockeying him. That's a throw in. There are 10 minutes to go at Old Trafford. Spurs lead 3 2. Duxbury for United to Whiteside. Davenport. Only as far as Sieverbeck from Hoddle. Strachan. Nicely done by Gordon Strachan. Who played under Alex Ferguson at Aberdeen. As the battered hero of Tottenham. Nice to see all the short hair cuts around John, isn't it? Both managers, actually, Laurie, have, uh, I think it's fair to say, tightened up the discipline a little bit at these two clubs. There's a change in match day routine for both the Spurs and the Manchester United players under David Pleas and Alex Ferguson. So, uh, maybe the alterations in that area are going to have some effect. We shall see. I thought they'd notice your haircut, John, and realise that was the trend. And they're coming up today alongside you. <laughs> Actually, when I was talking about discipline, I really meant to say that the routine on the day of a match uh, has altered uh, in the case of, uh, of both clubs. Offside. Against Davenport. Still having quite a battle there with Moses. This is Roberts. Well, there are eight minutes to go. It's Manchester United 2, Tottenham Hotspur 3. When at half time, it was Manchester United 2, Tottenham Hotspur 0. Of course, if we're going to uh, refer back to the classic matches in the past between these two teams, you've probably seen that old black and white Bobby Charlton goal on television that was scored here in the Charity Shield. What a feeling that match ended 3-3. And uh, might have been the game when Pat Jennings scored a goal, although uh, doubtless the Tottenham fans will correct me on that if I'm wrong. Here's Remy Moses. Those were the days of Law, Charlton and Best. Dave Mackay, Jimmy Greaves. Here now we have Norman Whiteside. Brian Robson closing in. And also the days of um, the Spurs double winning team prior to that, in which uh, Clive Allen's father, Les, was a member before Jimmy Greaves took his place. And Clive now with 22 goals in 22 first-team appearances this season. You couldn't ask for a tidier strike rate than that, could you? Gary Mabbott's injured. And John Sheridan, the uh, Tottenham physiotherapist there, who came from Luton with David Pleat. I think an interesting blend David might have found in midfield since our dealers went off. Roberts giving Hoddle the comfort of his strength and defence sitting in behind him and allowed Glenn Hoddle to take tremendous responsibility from the halfway line forward. It was Kevin Moran whose own goal really changed the course of the match. Although they were 2 1 ahead at the time, that was the goal that put Tottenham back on terms and they quickly made the most of that. And Moran had the misfortune to miss a first-half chance that uh, might have even seen Manchester United go in three up at the break. Anyway, here he is again. This is Roberts. Yeah. 
Spurs were beaten 3-2 by Nottingham Forest at home last weekend. They now lead 3-2. With five minutes to go. Waddle offside. Richard Goff. He played here in quite an exciting uh, cup tie for Dundee United. That's his pass. Looking for Paul Allen. Now, can Manchester United still yet salvage something from this quite extraordinary match, which they seem to have so much under their control at half time? The rain is still sheeting down. Receiver back to Moses. Robson. And Whiteside and Robson, but it won't go through. And Brian Robson has gone down. And picks himself up and starts to make his way slowly back. goes Chris Waddle Graham Roberts is well forward in the centre here so too is Clive Allen this is Hoddle I think he just fancied the <laughs> to chip the goalkeeper there Turner was just a yard or two out of his ground and Hoddle's already half done that to some effect which led to the own goal Here's Strachan. Oh, and here's Robson. Penalty, is it? Brian Robson brought down by Danny Thomas. And just waiting for the confirmation, but it looks like a penalty to me. Robson here was in a good position, and he was checked, Laurie. Yes, definite penalty. Uh, Brian Robson must be very tired, he's been out injured for a while, but his nature is to continue to battle on and get into that penalty area. And he got in there and the defender never went for the ball, he stumbled into him and the referee never hesitated. So, the responsibility falls to Peter Davenport with two minutes to go. was so, so unlucky. Davenport struck it well, but the Tottenham goalkeeper went the right way. Just see how near he was to pulling off a save. He got both hands to it, but couldn't keep it out. The power took it in. And Manchester United are back level again with just about a minute to go. 3-3, and is there more to come? This is Strachan. And he's gone down, but uh, Mitchell Thomas won the ball. Brian Robson, who's run, earned that penalty for Manchester United. Sieverbeck. And Strachan. And still. And Goff. Over his own crossbar. The last minute. Oh, what classic entertainment. Jesper Olsen will take the corner. White side closer to him. Jesper Olsen will take the corner. White side closer to him. Stapleton's there as well. So is Moran. And so is Hoddle. If they play like this, then the crowds will come back to football. 
It's a match that's kept us on the edge of our seats from the moment Clive Allen hit the post in the first minute to the moment Davenport put that penalty in in the 89th. 3-3. Sieverbeck. We're going into stoppage time now. It's a match, I think, as well, which has made Peter Davenport a lot more popular with the supporters. He's had a good game, and that took a lot of nerve to take that penalty at this stage of the game. And Kevin Moran will be a relieved man, I would think, at this moment. Here's Moses. Down the years, very few clubs have provided better entertainment when they've met than Spurs and Manchester United. And this match goes down in that particular hall of memories. Manchester United led 2-0 at half-time with goals by Whiteside and Davenport. Then in the second half, Spurs scored twice in the space of two minutes. Gary Mabbott with a thundering header which really turned the game and an own goal by Kevin Moran. 73 minutes, Clive Allen made it 3-2 to Tottenham and then with a minute to go for the foul on Brian Robson, a penalty to Manchester United and Davenport made it 3-3. Well, if football's going to be like that, then let's have a lot more of it. And thank goodness a large audience has seen what can be served up in the way of genuine entertainment. The match well contested, well refereed, and certainly for those of us that were here, and I hope for those of you at home too,